The year is 2011. Call Me Maybe is on the radio, and the iPhone still had a headphone jack. A simpler time. And while most of us were downloading Angry Birds, Google had an idea. With the start of large-scale satellite internet from the likes of Viasat in the same year and HughesNet in 2012, it was becoming apparent that maybe residential internet access was going skyward. But satellites were expensive, their coverage is spotty, as anyone with satellite TV can attest, and you have to deal with a lot of red tape to even get your craft airborne. Just look at Microsoft-funded project Teledesic, an ultimately failed attempt at low-orbit satellite internet in the 1990s. So Google, or more accurately, Google's parent company Alphabet, took a different approach. What if, instead of the headache of satellites, you could use balloons? Floating cellular towers in the sky, as they put it. And so the then-named Google X, now X Development, Alphabet's R&D department, got to work. After years of trial and error, in 2013 they launched 30 balloons over New Zealand, providing internet to a whopping 50 users. With plans to send up 300 more over New Zealand, Australia, Chile, and Argentina, and with the hopes of thousands of more dotting the stratosphere. Jump ahead to 2016, and between then and 2020, a lot happened with the Loon project. Google has agreements with Brazil, France, Vatican City, and Sri Lanka for LTE coverage reaching speeds of a respectable 155 megabits per second. Instead of launching by hand, Google now shoots their seeds of coverage in the air with something that looks like a NASA knockoff dubbed Chicken Little. They develop fluffy socks to prevent puncturing the balloons when standing on them. And some even blow off course, causing several scares around the world with people reporting them as crashing UFOs. A small company called Space Delta sues Google, stating that they stole the idea and technology from them after they met in 2007 and discussed confidential information about how they were providing balloon coverage frequencies to oil fields that seemed eerily similar to how Google's balloons operated. But no worries, Google throws money at the problem and continues on, like true heroes of industry. All sarcasm aside, one noteworthy case of Loon's success was providing internet after natural disasters, such as when they provided a connection to Puerto Rico following Hurricane Maria, and it did bring internet to some remote parts of Africa. But then, in January 2021, out of the blue if you will, it was announced that the project was shutting down. Now, you might be asking, with all that money and potential and money, why did Alphabet stop the project? Well, according to Google, the whole point that they started the harebrained idea was to provide internet to the most remote parts of the world, getting them connected to the web so they too can share random videos and argue on Facebook. But it took so long getting the thing to work and gather agreements from governments that like the roots of a well-watered tree, cables had already snaked their way into the areas that they wanted to cover, essentially making it not worth their time and money to build up the system. Not to mention the fact that that would mean competition, and as we've seen, Google doesn't much care for that unless they can make a quick buck off of it. But I think there's more than just a lack of need and competition. Only a few months prior to the closing announcement, SpaceX had launched their satellites into orbit, and soon after started taking pre-orders for the service. Alphabet owns a good portion of Starlink, so why would they continue a very slow-growing, sometimes free-to-the-user project when they already own stock in a similar launch? The answer? They wouldn't. Unless it fails, Starlink will always bring in a good amount of cash. Google is after all a business, and if their track record has shown anything, it's profits over people every time. Google did say they're willing to provide a few grants to a few select areas that they were servicing with Loon, but it remains to be seen if this will help. In my opinion, at the end of the day, Google tried a crazy idea that they hoped would boost their humanitarian rapport and ultimately make them money, but it was slow going, expensive, and they saw the opportunity to make a profit faster by simply investing in an up and coming competitor, finally scrapping Project Loon altogether. If you or someone that you know actually used the Loon internet while it was up, we would be very interested to hear about your experience. And let us know in the comments what you thought of the video and Project Loon as a whole. I think I covered all the highlights, but I may be wrong. So please, if I miss something, let me know. This has been Ryan from the Device Casting Couch Podcast, and thanks for watching.